In just over a month, Nigerians will go to the polls to elect a new president. The country's media have been trying to cover the campaign, but it's not easy. Last year, out of the 175 countries that the media watchdog group, Reporters Without Borders, listed in its Press Freedom Index, Nigeria was ranked number 145. That's down 10 places from the year before. One website that's managing to report and make news in Nigeria is called Sahara Reporters which made its online debut in 2006. It's become a media force in Nigeria, largely because it's not in Nigeria. The site's editor, Omoyele Soware, is based in New York City, beyond the reach of the politicians and the corporations that his site often reports on. And most of his contributors aren't trained journalists. They're everyday Nigerians who photograph, video, and blog for Sahara reporters. The Listening Post's Minakshi Ravi now on a website that isn't everyone's journalistic cup of tea, but is shaking up the Nigerian news space nonetheless. From his office in Manhattan, New York, Omoyele Shawore, the editor of Sahara Reporters, is whipping up a media froth 8,000 kilometers away in Abuja, Nigeria. Well, Sahara Reporters is a very popular media outlet here in Nigeria, and I guess what appeals to people is the nature of the stories they report. Eyewitness accounts, just raw information about sensitive issues that uh, the press in Nigeria is too afraid to publish or report. Stories like the huge ExxonMobil oil spill in the Niger Delta last year touchy tribal politics in Nigeria's various states. But the story that put Sahara reporters on the news map in Nigeria had to do with the president, Umar Musa Yaradua. Thousands of protesters took to the streets of the federal capital territory Abuja to condemn the absence of Mr. President. Late in 2009, the president was sick and out of the country. The government kept the details under wraps, and reporting by Nigerian media was thin on facts. Most senators uh, expressed their anger over the lack of credible information on the health status of the number one citizen. Sahara reporters got the story, reporting where the president was, what the health issue was, and kept a running count of his days out of the country. It's the kind of journalism Nigerian media do not typically provide. Most of what Nigerians get their news from, I mean the newspapers, the TV stations, have been completely taken over by the money bags. So, that has diluted the media as we know it. It's a media market that is dominated by politicians and influential businessmen, and it limits investigative reporting, and uh, it leads to sometimes unethical uh, journalism or unethical practices, but this is not unique to Nigeria. It happens all across Africa. Here we get an email, an email, or you can send me a text, you know? Which is why Shawari's decision to base himself out of New York is a smart one. Last year alone, Reporters Without Borders recorded 40 incidents of press violations in Nigeria. Three journalists were killed, seven were kidnapped in South Nigeria, and others faced death threats. An office in Manhattan puts Shawari at a safe distance. Sahara Reporters run from New York allows uh, this website to be free and independent of persecution and harassment. In the past, we have documented cases where Nigerian security have arrested individuals that were suspected of being affiliated with his websites. This is a website that is a target, a prime target for the Nigerian government. Because Sahara Reporters has been based on the web and overseas, they, there hasn't been that fear of reporting uh, what they believe to be true. And I think that that's what Nigerians have really re uh, respected um, and uh, embraced about Sahara Reporters. And that, what, that's why it continues to grow in popularity. Sahara Reporters, I, mostly I browse it on the net. And I find it very interesting. They give quality information. Sahara reporters have really gone a long way to expose some of the hills of society that have been kept under the carpet by the Nigerian and mainstream media. The website's popularity isn't just with Nigerian readers. A lot of the traffic to the site comes from people wanting to contribute. Shawari employs no formal staff. 
His website's tagline is report yourself, and he means it. There are people who are saying to themselves, you know, we used to consume news, but we can actually produce news ourselves. We are doing the part of media or news reporting that is too important to be left to journalists or professionals. It really has changed the face of online journalism with respect to the Nigerian audience. Nigerians love information. They are news junkies, at least most of them are. And Sahara Reporters has given them a forum where they can express themselves. But while crowdsourced reporting can be powerful, and as Tunisia and Egypt proved revolutionary, it also has drawbacks. One of the major challenges that citizen journalism faces is accuracy of information. Uh, because when you're getting uh, thousands of uh, reports, eyewitness accounts, it is difficult to sometimes uh, determine whether or not these reports are accurate or not. Well, Sahara Reporters has been controversial in some respects, and Al Jazeera have been a target of Sahara Reporters' journalism. The president was plagued by serious bouts of illness. Last year, when the former president died, it was reported that uh, the first lady of Nigeria had approached Al Jazeera about getting her brother-in-law onto uh, one of our reports. And I read in their reports, my name was mentioned several times about approaches towards me uh, by members of the family. Now, that never happened. The Sahara reporters packaged the whole thing as if the, the first family had essentially paid for airtime, which was completely unfounded and untrue. Sahara reporters may get caught out once or twice, but that isn't denting the website's following. Sahara reporters and Mr. Sawori are part of a larger community of uh, citizen uh, journalists and online-based bloggers and reporters who are more and more uh, gaining prominence by uh, breaking uh, some of the biggest stories in Africa. It is a wonderful uh, phenomenon which has allowed so many other voices to join the debate. But the truth is that with social media, everybody actually controls their own media space now. You have a Twitter account, you transmit your own news on it. You have Facebook, you have friends. What is important is for people to get the message as small as possible in a big way. And that's why we're hit, you know, with Nigerians. With elections coming April 9th, voters will be logging on to Sahara reporters in big numbers. There are thousands of stories to be told and millions of voices to be heard on the site that delivers news on Nigeria via New York. More Global Village voices now on the media landscape in Nigeria. Sahara Reporters are a credible organization that's come to the forefront of media in Nigeria and across Africa over the last many years. The reason for this stemmed from the fact that there had been a lack of balance in the Nigerian media scene. I'm an audience leader of Sahara Reporters, but I must point out that when media in general is unfortunately not yet an integral part of Nigerian society, there is plenty of room for innovation as our society embraces the internet further. However, abject poverty and a rather high illiteracy index have been major setbacks to our interaction with the internet in general. A lot of Nigerians are, you know, trooping online to get uh, first hand information of what's going on in their country. So Sarah reporters, Nigerian Village Squares and lots and lots of bloggers around the world are contributing immensely to information dissemination in Nigeria. And I think the future of Nigeria will depend a lot on uh, how people use and consume information from the net.